So, hi everybody. Thank you, Mariana, for the great introduction. And by the way, I would like to ask everybody for a favor. Please give a round of applause for the entire crew and Mariana, because she is killing it as a presenter today. <laughs> Hope you had a nice break and we can get this show on the road. So, what you're seeing in front of you is one of these neologisms that we tend to have a lot of in our industry. We tend to invent new terms for various things every so often. And today we're going to talk about one such term called DevEx or developer experience. We're also going to talk about developer relations. Okay, so before we start uh, philosophizing about this interesting topic, uh, let us first introduce ourselves. Uh, as I was already introduced, my name is Boros Itnikovsky, work as a code wrangler on the DevEx team at Automatic. Feel free to reach out at any of these links, email, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, happy to chat about anything basically. And like I said, my name is Darko. You can reach me out at these links. I am working in developer relations with multiple companies, but one of my favorite ones is the organization we started together with my team called DevEd. So, let's have a show of hands. Have you before, have you before heard about the term DevEx or DevRel? Are you familiar with it? Okay, there are a couple of you out there. So. Let's get started by saying that there is no single definition to these things. They are very intersectional, they have various definitions, different people will that are into DevRel work basically different jobs. That's at least my take on it. Uh, there are uh, many different definitions for DevX and DevRel, uh, and I think nobody can agree on a single one, but one I mostly like is about seeing DevEx or DevRel folks as kind of like tourist guides in a company. So every company has their own, its own culture and it is really up to the developer experience engineer or DevRel engineer to spread this uh, culture uh, among the employees. On top of that, uh, we actually realized that we were colleagues by accident. We both did, like I did DevRel, he did DevX, we had no idea we were colleagues up until a couple of months we were into the profession. So that tells a lot about how confused this profession actually is. Okay, so uh, one thing that can, be, uh, can help with uh, figuring out what this thing is, uh, it can be sort of seen as the intersection between uh, a lot of different uh, parts. Of course, the, the, the core part here is engineering, but then uh, the other parts like uh, HR, community, product, marketing, content. So the, these intersections can be basically seen as what, what DevEx uh, is, is mostly about. Yes, and interestingly, as you can see, we're amazing UI designers. Our rates are very reasonable and you can hire us to do stuff like this for you. So. Please do. <laughs> uh, one interesting anecdote about this diagram is, so Darko and I, we drink a lot of beers and philosophize a lot about software engineering and whatnot. So this diagram was uh, in our heads, basically. We, we thought we saw it somewhere online and we, we wanted to like, we, we spent like 10, 15 minutes searching it online and it actually, it only existed in our heads as a result of many discussions. So this is our skills in uh, design and experience. Yeah, and you can call it a collective hallucination, this image actually. <laughs> So, okay, let's get into the more uh, theoretical and definition bits of our profession. So, DevEx and conversely DevRel is, uh, like we said, primarily engineering, but also has cross sections with three foundational pillars, community, content, and product. We are going to get into each and give practical examples of those efforts. It's also worth mentioning that these are uh, can be seen as useful fictions and there is a lot of overlap uh, in the tasks that are contained in community, for example, and the tasks that are contained in content. So it's uh, just as useful fictions for us to help uh, figure out what this thing really is. But the distinction in practice is not always so clear cut. So uh, speaking of community and some of the uh, shapes this can take are, for example, meetups, uh, conferences such as this one you're currently attending, DevCon, uh, workshops, uh, discussion on social media, uh, communities on Discord, Slack, 
uh, uh, Twitter, Facebook, wh whatever people are using, uh, doing live streams, doing YouTube videos, YouTube recordings, and uh, the biggest uh, part of it is just like uh, collecting feedback from users and according to this feedback, improving the overall community uh, health. In, in a more practical sense, when you're working in a company in the DevEx and DevRel branches of industry, one of, the prim one of the primary things you're doing is hiring. Once somebody passes the HR screen, which usually happens, not always, they're basically in your hands, large air quotes. You're here to make sure that they're technically sound, they're a good cultural fit and so forth. Basically cover the void where somebody that's non-technical necessarily wouldn't be able to cover. Uh, exactly. So um, my main part at Automatic working on DevEx is being involved closely with hiring. So this means, just like Darko said, uh, we get a lot of applications from candidates applying for a job position and uh, past the screening stage, past the HR interview stage, they get to the engineering part and it is really on us to figure out how good uh, problem solvers there are, how good of a research they are doing or the design and abstractions, how, how they approach uh, problem solving in general, and essentially the, uh, just determining their, their knowledge and whether they would be a good culture fit for the company. The second practical point is one of meetups. Um, I would like to mention BridgeJS Copia, which was sort of my gateway into this profession. I didn't realize I was doing DevRel up until like five years I was into doing a meetup, and then I realized that people got paid for that. Surprise. But the thing is, why I started doing it is mostly because out of personal frustration. I had to travel to various cities around the world to attend meetups, and we didn't really have like decent meetups around here. The IT scene sort of died off in the community sense. So I started it. It got interesting. People started showing a lot of enthusiasm for it and it grew to be probably the largest meetup around here. The primary value is uh, connecting people together for projects, for mutual interests, sharing education, disseminating knowledge, and so forth. So communities are great in that sense. Uh, another example of community in practice is also mentorship. This can be mentorship on the job. So specifically uh, for Automatic, I'm involved in mentoring other developers. And uh, the motto that we go uh, by is that mentorship is really a two-way street. So it's not like, unlike a parent-child relationship where you teach your child how to do stuff. Uh, a mentoring uh, process is one where both parties learn something. Uh, and they, uh, so see it like more like a two-way street rather than uh, somebody teaching somebody else something. Yes, and one of the most certain ways to see whether you really know something is to teach that thing to somebody else. Then you're sure that you fully understand it and that you, you are capable of transmitting it further, which is probably the biggest value of having such an effort. So the second pillar of uh, DevRel, DevX, and so forth, we, we'll be using this interchangeably pretty much. Uh, is the one of content creation. I would like to start this off by a quote uh, that I uh, heard in my DevEx mentorship. It uh, says that content creation is the final step of a learning process. Now the whole point of uh, content creation in our branch of industry is to educate, to teach somebody else through various shapes. Blogs, tutorials, writing, sometimes documentation for a product you're trying to you know, sell or market to developers creating video content, live streaming, podcasting, and so forth. And even speaking. Speaking is also, it might be considered content creation. So uh, some of the content stuff in practice are, uh, for example, both Darko and I, we have our personal blogs, and uh, essentially we produce content for other people to consume. Uh, the way I use my personal blog is mostly like a journal, like a public journal. So I'm sharing my uh, findings, like maybe learning some new technology or writing some reflections or just writing some opinions. But like Darko said uh, in the previous slide, uh, once I have written these things, I feel like th I have internalized this idea and it's crystallized in my head and I have a better grasp of, uh, of it. Yes, I also write a blog, mostly for technical stuff. But in a wider sense, a blog is a tool to also market your thing. In uh, the common knowledge of our, or the common understanding of our industry, writing, ha reading a blog post is a very low effort way for somebody to get in, uh, introduced or into a product. So these efforts are very much worth it when you're trying to do something with developers. 
Uh, one interesting example that we sort of started uh, as, a, as an experiment recently at Automatic um, is uh, the so-called Tweak program, uh, short for This Week in Code. So my job here is really to reach out to other developers, random teams, and see what is uh, going on for, for the current week. Like what is some interesting story they can share in terms of like uh, problem they solved or some abstraction they came up with. And just uh, figuring out a way for them to, to actually put this into words, uh, explain it to other coworkers with the aim to uh, share this knowledge so that everybody can learn, but also help them in internalizing the, this knowledge themselves and fill the knowledge gaps they have. Another practical example is this podcast my organization started around December called CodePub. The primary idea is to invite interesting people in the IT industry and basically interview them to demystify their aspects of their work to maybe newcomers, people that would like to switch profession and so forth. It's technical in a sense, but it's, it's really not about the technical parts of it, more about the human parts. It basically demystifies what it means to be a tech lead, what it means to, or how to get to a tech lead position, for example, how to get started at Automatic, because he was one of my first guests. Quality-wise, the episode is horrible, but the content is decent, so, you know, it's still a learning process. So, uh, speaking of product and the uh, common uh, shapes it can take, uh, there are a lot of different ways this can go, but uh, some common examples are uh, iterating on uh, existing documentation, technical documentation, or creating new one in order to improve the onboarding process for new developers, or just like in general helping spread the knowledge because we are working with complex systems every day and it's not that easy to just like uh, summarize in a single statement of what the system is about and wh where to find common, uh, most common use stuff. Uh, and then the other example, of course, uh, provide coding examples, uh, starters. This involves also tooling, scaffolding, having tools to create like the basic uh, structure, the, the, the very first Hello World program uh, for the system we are working on. Working with different API integrations, uh, collecting user feedback. Users in this case are obviously developers. So getting feedback, improving the, the existing ecosystem giving presentations such as the one Darko and I currently give uh, on, on a specific topic. And it, it, in general, it's really advocating for stuff aimed at developers. Yes, and stuff aimed at developers isn't, you know, just in the traditional sense, selling a certain product because, and I'm air quoting selling because we're probably the single most horrible audience to try to sell something to, hands down. So you don't really sell to developers like ever. No, in the most general sense, product tends to aim uh, at developers and uh, aim uh, to developers as a whole idea. So on the next slide, Uh, one of the product in practice that I'm uh, heavily involved at Automatic is uh, hiring tools. Like I already mentioned, I'm involved in the hiring process. And uh, this only not only involves uh, working with applicants, interviewing them, asking them questions, and so on. Uh, it also uh, goes beyond such as uh, beyond uh, stuff such, such as working on hiring tools. So the idea with hiring tools is really to help our recruiters, help our HR, and uh, even ourselves uh, automate some of the stuff we, we find doing on a regular basis. So, uh, just a quick example, our processes are automatic is you, once you apply for the job, you get a Slack invitation, and of course this would require creating the Slack invitation link, then sending it to, you, uh, to your email, but uh, we have a tool that uh, automates that so the recruiter can just like uh, talk to the chatbot and with a single command do uh, all of this stuff. Yes, and uh, in, the, in the wider sense of product, when you're doing work at a services-based company, not at a product-based company, because uh, a, a justifying developer relations efforts in product companies is easy. In services companies, your product are your developers, essentially. You're sort of the guide for them, teacher, mentor, and so forth. You're basically filling voids in certain places where more traditional IT company setups wouldn't usually be able to do that in the best way. And then the third example of uh, product in practice is obviously processes. Uh, uh, I know not a lot of us love processes, but there are way, uh, ways that they can be useful. So while not everything needs to have its own uh, process just for the sake of having a process, but some stuff we do mechanically on a daily basis uh, deserve to have a process because it, it helps, for example, with onboarding new people. Uh, they have a structure to follow and uh, it also helps us by 
having a checklist, for example, like uh, when doing deployment or, or things like that. Those can also be considered part of process. And uh, DevEx, DevRel folks can help with this, uh, identifying these patterns of repeated uh, tasks that deserve to have to be formalized in a way. So crew, oh yeah, we have it back, thank you very much. So yeah, let's face it, processes may not be fun, but they're necessary, So and somebody has to do them. So let's talk about a bit about uh, what uh, developer relations roles look like in practice, and what are the common shapes they take in the wild. Let's start talking about the DX extremes first. These are, each of these job descriptions sits at one of the pillars of developer experience. The first is the community builder, which basically builds communities, nourishes communities, grows communities, uh, basically takes care of the every necessity of a certain community they are trying to build. In a larger sense, a community can be the developers inside your company. Uh, the second one, the developer educator, can be seen as one who is a teacher or a mentor or just in general trying to spread knowledge, which I, I believe most of us do already. But in, in general, it's about teaching and educating people with the aim to uh, have more, more knowledge and also spread the, the same knowledge. And then at the final pillar is the developer experience engineer, a person who is mostly in charge of API shapes, the developer experience of a certain product or an API or a service or something like that, informs decisions, guides the product direction, and so forth. But again, these are just useful fictions. In practice, it looks somewhat different. Yes, so in practice, uh, you will see a lot of different titles. So one of the most commons are a developer advocate, developer relations, DevRel engineer, DX engineer. So all of these can be fused uh, basically in, 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 in all the, these uh, extremes that we list here. Yes, and in practice, my day-to-day -day work looks like a combination of all of the pillars. There are days I do, I do product work. There are days I do uh, community work. There are days I do a combination of all of them. It, it varies. It, it's really about wearing different hats each day. So what? Why do we care about any of this and what do we do with this information? Now, the primary inspiration for all of this was that we often got asked, what is it that, what the hell is it that you guys are actually doing day to day? So that sort of inspired this presentation and wanted to disseminate this idea because it's sort of growing and you're probably going to see more of it in the wild. Yes, so if at any point during this presentation so far you thought this sounds like HR or management or product or sales or marketing or whatever, we, whatever title we missed so far. Congratulations on the keynote reservation. You're right, of course. To a point, as we said, this is largely intersectional. This is wearing about this is about wearing different hats each day. Maybe doing completely different work day to day, but this is the definition and the takeaway. And also remember this slide. Spoiler alert: DevX exists because of the intersection of voids between engineering and X, where X was the thing that one of the things we listed on the slide on the previous slide. So what do we do with this information? Where do we go from here? Where, where does that lead us? What, what's the measurement? What's the value? What's the point of all of this? Uh, the obvious example is product companies. And when I talk about product companies, I really mean companies like uh, Amazon or Google or GitHub. As you have seen in the previous presentations, uh, there were uh, talks about Amazon. So really, these product companies uh, are the, the most obvious example. Having somebody in charge of developer or user education helps build a, a, a larger community. So we've seen the presentation on the AWS serverless. And of course, there, there needs to be a, a link for, for this information on, uh, from uh, serverless uh, or AWS to reach out the wider community. So DevEx and DevRel can really help with, uh, with this in, in case uh, they, they can also help with, with marketing, help with sales and engagement. And essentially, it's about ha having a team that is dedicated to, to work uh, on, on, on the existing um, application, but beyond the code. So just like thinking beyond the code in terms of community, uh, workshops, and uh, spreading the knowledge about it in general. Now, one of the more traditionally not seen as companies or setups in which there are developer relations or developer experience efforts are service-based companies. But like I said before, that's sort of a reductionist view. I know of a couple of agency-like setups that have 
very useful developer relations teams on board and they have very, some very happy developers in there. And it does help a lot with uh, developer re uh, with uh, employee retention. That's one of the things, but there are a lot of other things that internal developer relations efforts do actually. We can help communication, we can help mentor people because for the most part we are pretty experienced with what we've been doing. We've been doing it for quite a while. We help visibility, we help uh, basically the offering of the service-based company and so forth. Yes, like we uh, talked earlier, so uh, at Automatic I'm uh, heavily involved with doing mentorship and working on the, on the hiring part. And uh, it's uh, really about, just like I said, thinking about the products beyond code. So thinking about the, the wider company, thinking about the culture, the mission of the company and try to apply it and spread it among everybody. So how do we measure success? I guess this is the most interesting question here. Um, we can say that uh, success uh, for uh, a DevEx or DevRel engineer to be successful is best measured in lifetime value. So what is the value that this uh, engineer provides to the company that will ba basically help, help the company grow where it's headed at? Um, uh, while in practice we are mostly uh, used to work with OKRs, so OKRs are really, uh, we have goals for a specific project and we try to reach those goals and at the end of the project we say, okay, these goals are reached or they are not reached and this is how we measure success. But for, uh, speaking of li lifetime value, it is not always that easy to measure it. So uh, one analogy that I really like is to think of DevEx as sort of like a gardener that has a lot of plants plants being the developers, and then uh, as a gardener, uh, they water the plants so that the plants grow and they become the water, waterers there themselves uh, someday. So uh, essentially, it's really about doing uh, indirect marketing in a way. But okay, you might be thinking, okay, we understand what DevEx and DevRel might be. That's interesting, but we don't really need that. Well, I would beg to differ. I think you do, because we established that certain voids in the intersections between professions exist. For example, and this is my favorite one, have you ever tried selling something to a developer? No, it's, it's downright impossible. So the way that that's done is actually you go and write stuff, you go speak at conferences and so forth, inform them about the, pro the product you're trying to do, write, whatever, and then they're going to, at the point where they have that problem you're trying to solve, they're going to talk to their manager to buy your product. That's basically the only established way that this actually works in that way. But on the flip side, it doesn't really have to be full-time. If you have a small company, you're a service-based company that doesn't think there's a lot of value in having a dedicated uh, DevRel team and stuff like that, well, I'd wager that you'd be able to find somebody on your team that would be very happy to do this a uh, couple of hours per week, for example. Not all of us are wallflowers. Some of us actually like going on stage and talking about the thing they're doing. So to summarize, uh, DevEx really exists because of these intersectional voids that we've seen in the first diagram. Uh, and it's really about wearing multiple hats per week. Uh, it's really interdisciplinary work and just like doing all of these different stuff, collaborating with uh, every single part of the company with having engineer at the core. Thank you to both of you for this uh, intersectional and novelty presentation. Are there any questions from the audience? So I saw a hand first there and then we go back to the middle or we do the other way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Should I? Sure, go. Do you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, first of all, nice presentation. I like the concept of uh, two speakers. Uh, it was really interesting and also the the theme, I found it very interesting. Uh, this is the first time I'm hearing about, uh, about the topic. Uh, I'm also a bit closer to understanding what you are doing, but uh, I was uh, missing some uh, real life examples and um, I'm still wondering. Um, basically, uh, at this point, I just get this like uh, your uh, DevX would be a middleman. And everybody, everybody wants to cut the middleman. So, <laughs> yeah. But that turned dark really quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, I need uh, like uh, real life uh, example in uh, like uh, 
where do you come in handy in relationship between developer and uh, HR, developer and, and marketing, two or mm -hmm. three or maybe five would be nice. Thanks. Sure, okay, you can get started on this one. One, two, okay. Um, very good question, thank you for the question and I'm glad you enjoyed our presentation. So, uh, we first have, to, in order to answer the, this question, we first have to think about how developers think, right? So, what usually happens, developer focused on product work is they start their day by drinking some coffee, going through the Jira task or GitHub or whatever, and it sort of turns into a cycle after some period, right? So, developers usually get into this cycle of doing product work, uh, doing some writing of code, testing the code, ship it to production, ask for review, LGTM, all of those stuff. And it's really easy to get so deep into this like, uh, almost like a whirlwind where you forget about the bigger picture. So what is the bigger picture? There are many bigger pictures. One, one is the, your company, for example. Uh, which company are you working for? What's the mission of the company? Another is uh, th your users. W what problem are you solving for the users right now? Wh why is this needed? Why are you working on issue number 83 versus issue number 90? How do you determine the, the priority? You know, unless you have a product manager, but even if you do have a product manager, you can still ask them, why did you decide this? Like, what, what does the user really want? So all of these questions, um, dev uh, DevX engineers can really help with just like stepping in and sort of, uh, it's like uh, this uh, third perspective argument that I, that I really like. So uh, we are uh, so stuck in our daily jobs that it's very easy to, to miss the bigger picture. And having somebody to remind you and help with, help with you on the technical side as well, not just like you, you know, hey, you have to think about this as well, but if they ha don't have anything else to add, then it won't turn into a larger conversation. Okay, and to expand on that, to give you uh, two practical examples because, and find me afterwards, I can give you like 15 more because we don't have that much time. Uh, example number one is uh, technical hiring. For example, once a person passes the HR screening, somebody has to put them inside the process. There's not always dedicated people to do that, but you, ha you would have to certainly understand the process, have a bit of empathy, have a bit of larger understanding about what the company actually needs in order whether that person would be a good fit for the culture, would be a good fit for a certain goal, and so forth. Example number two, <laughs> sales. And uh, in many senses, when we get clients in service-based companies, they don't really know what they want. They know they have a general idea about a product and stuff like that. And DevEx people, and DevRel people, of course, can help clarify that into uh, attainable goals, into tasks that people can actually understand and maybe ship off to a team lead or somebody else that would actually build it into a product with their team. Thank you guys for the thorough uh, answers. We also had a question somewhere in the back. Uh, can the person raise the hand? Uh, sorry, we... Okay, well I promise we'll get the mic to you eventually. <laughs> And meanwhile, we play pa past the mic literally, so go you. Thank you. Uh, great presentation, Darko and uh, Boro. Uh, you had quite a good synchronization between the two of you, so. Uh, I wanted to ask you, I'm trying to wrap my head around this topic. Uh, I'm hearing about this right now. Is this, uh, can I compare it to the Scrum framework we use for the product work, uh, to the whole working processes and engineer and product owner and everyone in the team? I suppose in a way you could, but it's significantly more intersectional than that. Because thinking in terms of Scrum, you're thinking in terms of product. Right. And this has to do with a lot more intersections than just product. It has some intersections with sales, it has intersections with marketing, it has intersections with HR and so forth. So yes and no, I suppose. And any larger answer would probably take 15 more minutes, which we don't have yeah, right now. Just, uh, Find me outward, outside and we'll talk more. A couple of short questions too. If we compare it to this, isn't this losing too, in too much processes like we do with Scrum? And also, can you still quote on the job if you're a developer <laughs> advocate or any one of those? Uh, I suppose, yes. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> So I would add to that, uh, coding is still a great part because uh, our main focus is still engineering. We're, we are not trying to take anybody's job, like uh, either from the product manager or the hiring manager or whoever. It's really about just identifying the intersections and filling the intersectional voids. So uh, coding uh, with engineering at its core, coding is still a very large uh, part of what we do. 
But so, uh, for for example, in, in my case, I would just like jump on a random team and just help with some, uh, you know, uh, small issues or even tackle larger architectural issues just to get like the ball moving. And then sort of once they figure out, okay, this team like got the grasp of this, they can just continue from there. All right, I think that would be all in terms of question. I'm uh, very aware that such novelty presentation does have a lot of follow-up questions, but we do have the networking in the end of the presentation, so just. Thank you, Boro and Darko, for the moment. That would be all from you on the stage, and we'll catch up later.